The aim of this video is to signpost important features of Charlotte Bronte's writing, which will help you in your close reading and note taking of the novel. The genre of Jane Eyre is Bildungsroman. Look, my apologies to all the German speakers out there. And Bildungsroman is a coming of age story. Uh, the novel follows the emotions and experiences of Jane Eyre, the protagonist, and her growth to adulthood. It was one of the first English novels that incorporated a child's point of view. Um, look, there are significant similarities between Jane Eyre and the Harry Potter novels. The orphan protagonist, the horrible relatives that are the protagonist's guardians, and the escape to boarding school, although Lowood is certainly no Hogwarts. Jane Eyre is structured into five parts as Jane travels between five different settings. Gateshead Hall, Lowood School, Thornfield Hall, Moorhouse and Ferndean Manor. Now it's possible to argue that Jane Eyre follows the five act narrative structure. Um, so in the first setting you've got expo exposition, then complications, climax being the, the non-marriage between Rochester and Jane, um, reversals, um, and then resolution. And look, the structure of Jane Eyre allows the narrative flow, which is what makes, and one of the things that makes Jane Eyre so easy to read. Charlotte Bronte creates compelling and interesting characters through her use of language. Jane's unfavourable description of Richard Mason captures his skittishness. His eye wandered and had no meaning in his wandering. This gave him an odd look, such as I never remembered to have seen. For a handsome and, and unamiable looking man, he repelled me exceedingly. The language captures Mason's nervousness and also Jane's feelings towards him. Bronte also uses language to create stunning scenery in Jane Eyre. When Rochester proposes to Jane, Bronte uses language to paint the lustrous scene in Thornfield's gardens. No nook in the grounds more sheltered and more Eden-like. It was full of trees. It bloomed with flowers. A very high wall shut it out from the court on one side. On the other, a beech avenue screened it from the lawn. Bronte describes the wildness of the moors, and she also criticised Jane Austen's novels for being too interior. There are a number of literary devices to take note of in Jane Eyre. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at Bronte's use of foreshadowing and allegory. Um, however, I did touch on symbolism um, in Jane Eyre in a previous video, which you can check out as well. Foreshadowing is a literary device where the author provides the reader with an advance hint of what is to come later in the story. In the novel, Jane's marriage to Rochester is foreshadowed by Brocklehurst's story of the boy who would prefer to have a verse of Psalms to learn rather than a gingerbread nut to eat. The child chooses morality over pleasure, which is what Jane chooses when she discovered that her great love, Rochester, is already married. Jane, like the boy, is rewarded for her morality. Allusion is a figure of speech that refers to a well-known story, event, person or object to making a comparison in the reader's mind. The burning of Thornfield Hall cleanses it of the impure woman, Bertha, who inhabited it. The story reflects Homer's odyssey when Telling Marches hangs the maids for sleeping with Penelope's suitors. Um, after this, one of the older maids actually goes through and cleanses Odysseus's hall using uh, fire and sulphur. Um, the allusion to the Odyssey highlights how patriarchal society, such as the 19th century England, harshly treated female sexuality. So to quickly recap what we've covered in the lesson, Jane Eyre is a coming-of-age novel. Jane's movement between the different settings structures the, the novel. Charlotte Bronte uses language to create vivid scenery and compelling characters. And foreshadowing and illusion are literary devices that are both used in Jane Eyre. So as you're taking notes, look out for them. Well, look, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've got something valuable out of the lesson. Um, if you would like to subscribe, please press the, the, bu the button to the bottom right. And otherwise, look, I look forward to seeing you uh, in my next video. So look, thanks again for watching.